enterprise architecture as we know it's an architecture at the enterprise level and it includes a set of principal methods and models that help in shaping the design and realization of an enterprise organizational structure business process information systems and infrastructure one of the most important characteristics of an enterprise architecture is that it offers a holistic view of the enterprise why that holistic view is needed because within the individual domains of an enterprise definitely certain local optimization will take place as per the changing requirements of that domain and the architectures within that domain may seem optimal too but what is optimal for a particular domain may not be good for the organization as a whole and we can say may not necessarily lead to a desired situation for the company as a whole for example an organization can have a highly optimized technical infrastructure but when it comes to leveraging the rapid changing business processes and agility that technical infrastructure may prove too rigid and inflexible for that very purpose so an enterprise architecture helps in balancing these requirements and facilitates a smooth translation of a corporate strategy into day to day operations and when we ensure that we ensure the quality as well now someone can ask what is the definition of quality in an enterprise architecture quality in the context of the enterprise architecture simply means that the architecture must help in achieving the essential business objectives so while constructing an architecture at the enterprise level it is necessary that the choices that we make must be rational and related to the larger business objectives now let's talk about the architecture as a process it is said that an architecture is a process as well as a product architecture as a product helps the managers in designing their business processes and system developers in building applications that are aligned with the larger business objectives and policies of the organization while architecture as a process has a much wider and far reaching implication like any other process the architecture process follows the usual steps as well from taking an initial idea through design and implementation phases to an operational system and that may involve ultimately changing or replacing the system as well it is necessary to note that like architecture the architecture description itself undergo a life cycle where the different architecture products in that life cycle are discussed with the stakeholders involved and then they are either approved revised or discarded the goal is that everyone involved in the process must have a common frame of reference now let's talk about the key drivers of an enterprise architecture what are the factors that impact an enterprise architecture from inside and outside so we'll discuss the internal drivers first if you talk about the internal drivers the business it alignment is considered as an important factor it is a crucial instrument to realize organizational effectiveness to achieve that effectiveness a well orchestrated interaction of organizational components is needed and it is important to note that the effectiveness is driven by the relationship between those components rather than by the detailed specification of each individual component so these internal drivers are factors that originate from within the organization itself like business goals and objectives the enterprise architecture should align with the organization's overall goals and objectives ensuring that the it systems and processes are optimized to support the business then we have it infrastructure and capabilities 
The enterprise architecture should reflect the organization's existing IT infrastructure and capability and identify areas where improvements or enhancements may be needed. Then, of course, organization, organizational culture and the structure. The enterprise architecture should consider the organization's culture and structure as well as its business processes and workflows to ensure that the architecture can be effectively implemented and maintained. Then resource availability is another factor. An enterprise architecture should take into account the resources, including the people, time and budget that are available within the organization to support the development and implementation of the architecture. And then we must also consider the business continuity and disaster recovery, the need for business continuity and disaster recovery, ensuring that the critical systems and data can be restored quickly and effectively in the event of a disruption. This is also an important internal factor to be considered while crafting the enterprise architecture. So these internal drivers are the those that are the most popular ones. Other, other than these, an individual enterprise can have the other internal factors depending upon their unique situation. But whatever are your internal drivers, the enterprise architecture should be carefully, should carefully consider them when developing and implementing an architecture as they can have a significant impact on the success of your overall initiative. Whenever we discuss the internal factors or drivers of enterprise architecture, the strategic alignment model of Henderson and Venkatraman proposed in 1993 come to our discussion. It distinguishes between the aspects of business strategy an organizational infrastructure on one hand, an IT strategy, an IT infrastructure on the other hand. The strategic alignment model or SAM as we call it, is a conceptual model that has been used to understand its strategic alignment from the perspective of four components. Business strategy, IT strategy, organizational infrastructure and processes and IT infrastructures and processes and then their interdependencies. Now let's talk about the external factors or the external drivers. External drivers are those factors that originate from outside and impact the organization's IT systems and processes. When we talk about the external drivers, the first factor is industry trains and standards. The enterprise architecture should take into account the latest trains and standards within the organization's industry and ensure that its systems and processes are aligned with those trains and standards. Then we also have to keep in mind the regulatory requirements because we have to compile with any relevant regulatory requirements, ensuring that the organization's IT systems and processes meet legal and regulatory obligations is also one of the important points to be considered. Technology advancement, of course, enterprise architecture should consider the latest advancement in technology and identify opportunities for the organization to leverage those advancements to enhance their IT systems and processes. Competitive pressure is another factor. The enterprise architecture should take into account the competitive pressure facing the organization and ensure that the IT systems and processes enable the organization to compete effectively in the marketplace. And then of course, the customer demands. The enterprise architecture should consider the demands and expectations of the organization's customer, internal, external, both, and ensure that its IT systems and processes are designed to meet those demands and expectations. 
So external drivers of enterprise architecture are also the important consideration for any organization as they can influence the organization's IT strategy and impact its ability to achieve the larger goals. So in a nutshell, all these architecture models, views, presentations, and analysis that we use in an enterprise architecture are there to facilitate better communication between architects and other stakeholders. And we can say that an architecture is a crucial instrument in controlling the complexity of the enterprise and its processes and systems. While on the one hand, the internal drivers related to the strategy execution of an organization tell us that better alignment between business and IT leads to lower cost, higher quality, better time to market, and greater customer satisfaction. On the other hand, external drivers from regulatory authorities and other external pressures necessitate the organizations to have a thorough insight into their structure and operations. But in the current VOCA environment, where we practice to sustain in a volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous situation, an enterprise architect must understand that what he or she know today may not be applicable tomorrow. So the focus of our spotlight should be more on the approach and larger picture within and outside the business domain instead of adhering to particular set of tools, models and instruments.